Thank you, sir. Kim K. Pastor, I like that. You're very kind. Good evening. Ted, thank you very much for that very gracious introduction, and I want to thank the board for inviting me to be here. This is truly an honor. I want to thank Andy for making the call to let me know I had been invited. I want to acknowledge our, our, uh, our outstanding faculty seated to the left, and of course the parents of the graduates, and most of all, to the history-making 2015 graduation class of the Ken Kate School. I want to echo Andy's sentiments. There should be some smiling in here. If nothing else, well, that, there should be some smiling in here, and we're excited about that. And before I begin my, little, begin my speech, I do want to recognize my wife. My children would just as much, just as soon, stay where they are and not be recognized. But I, know my, I want to recognize my wife, and she won't mind. Baby, won't you please stand? I have three children and one baby. That's my baby, Suzette Turner Carwell. Yeah. So the purpose of my relational, relatively informal, but prepared remarks are designed to do one thing, and that is to encourage our graduation class. The remarks will be practical and pithy, because <laughs> I've got 15 minutes. But the speech will also enlist and encourage your support. And if this little graduation speech had a thesis sentence, it would be this. Ready? Balance, balance, balance. More specifically, the quality of your lifestyle and the quantity of your life's days will be determined if not defined by your willingness and ability to live a balanced life. I have here a guy I just met last week who's going to help me with this illustration. <laughs> His name is Bruce Manners. <laughs> Notice, if you would, Bruce is Balancing while he's riding a one's, that, come on back, Bruce. Get, get, do it one more time, please. He's riding a one, what do you call it, one, a unicycle, and he's tossing bars at the same time. Those bars arguably, arguably represent the time you need to spend with yourself, with others, and God. Those three bars, one more time, Bruce, you're doing so well. <laughs> Last time, Bruce, those three bars represent your past, present, and future. You should process your past, produce in your present, and prepare for your future. Those three bars also represent as Issa, so is it Issa, Issa, Issa? Issa, Issa thank you. As Issa so brilliantly described and stole seven minutes of my speech, thank you. Those three bars also represent academics, arts, and athletics. The great Kincaid School, for over 100 years, for over 100 years, the great Kincaid School has been placing its signature of academic excellence on the canvas of education. Just recently, however, that canvas has expanded. It's no longer just academics, and smart schools like Kincaid understand that dumb private schools are still trying to get it. <laughs> academics, arts, and athletics all contribute, all contribute to the education of the whole person. And I was going to say some of the same things that Issa said. I really was, but I'm not, I'm gonna, we, we, we just say five minutes, Andy. But I do want to roll it out this way. All the graduates who participated in some form of, uh, you participated on an athletic team, 
during your four years here at Kincaid, won't you please stand? Look at that. Look at that. Thank you. Have a seat. Everyone who participated in the arts, you were actually in a production during your four years. At some point during your four years here at Kincaid, won't you please stand? Look at that. Look at that. Those of you who were on a team and you participated in a production at some point during your four years here at Kincaid, won't you please stand? You did both of them. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you. No question about it. When you participate in all three arenas, you are preparing yourself more effectively for the future. Far as Ms. Duran shared with me while we were in a little session, she, she said 50%, listen to this, this is an amazing statistic, at least to me, 50% of the jobs, J-O-B-S, jobs, which will be available four years from now, do not exist today. 50% of the jobs which will exist Four years from now, do not exist today. So you see, developing a spirit of flexibility and nimbleness and creativity, which academics and arts and athletics arguably help, help, help bring together, prepares you for the future. After all, all work and no, no play makes Jack or Jill a dull person. <laughs> Similarly, all play <laughs> and no work makes Jack or Jill a foolish person. <laughs> and both you and your parents have invested too many resources, be you a lifer or you just got here last night. You have expended too many resources to spend one day of your future foolishly. So I thank you in advance for not being a foolish person. Balance. Balance. It takes two wings to fly a plane. Speaking of Jack and Jill, ah, I call upon the folk song index number 10266 from mid century England. You may recognize it this way. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down. Let's pause right there. What <laughs> caused Jack to fall down? He lost his balance. He lost his balance. Categorically speaking, there are two things that can cause you to lose your balance. External factors, which you have no control over, or internal factors, which you can control. External factors would include, but not be limited to, the death of a loved one, the death of a relationship, and not just the death of a relationship. Sometimes when two folk get married, you don't think should get married, that can cause you to lose your balance as well. <laughs> when the uh, price of oil plummets seemingly inexplicably. That as well can cause you to lose your balance. There are a lot of things externally that can cause you to lose your balance and you have no control of it. But there are some other things that could cause you to lose your balance that are internal which you can control. The list is seemingly endless, but let me just highlight one. Narcissism. Meism. Thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. Believing that you are the straw that stirs all drinks. <laughs> Believing that the sun rises and sets on your backside exclusively. Walking into a room and sucking up all the air in the room because your ego is so big you have eclipsed the other persons who are there. That type of internal ill will cause you to lose your balance. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down. And 
Any doctors in the house? And broke his crown. Which is to suggest when you lose your balance, there's an in implicit and explicit cost to the society. You are removed from productivity because you have busted your crown. So you see, when you maintain your balance, you contribute to the productivity of the community and arguably even to the entire GNP. Do all that you can to keep your balance. I learned something while preparing for this little message. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jill came running after. And lo and behold, there are 19 verses to that nursery rhyme. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll spare you of 17 of them. But the third one goes like this, and I wrote it down. Then Jack came in, excuse me, then Jill came in, and she did grin to see Jack's paper plaster. Her mom whipped her across her knee for laughing at Jack's disaster. Another version says, for creating Jack's disaster. Last point, last point. One of the keys to keeping your balance is surrounding yourself with the right people. You may not be able to choose your family members, but you can choose your friends. You choose the wrong friends, they will cause you to fall out of balance. Jill laughed at Jack. You don't need anyone in your life who's going to laugh at you when you lose your balance. Be very careful about choosing your friends. So we're wrapping this up. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jill came tumbling after. Don't worry. Turn, turn, come on, turn, turn, come on. Come on, son. You missed your cue. <laughs> That's not a mistake. Notice that my son, a little bit late on cue, but he's here, <laughs> came and helped manners get back on track. Life is full of twists and turns. We will all fall at some time, but make certain you fall farther down the road and higher in your life. And make certain you have someone in your life who cares about you enough to help you up when you stumble. May God bless you, and may God bless the Kincaid School, and remember, balance, balance, balance. Thank you. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. I just made an executive decision that in order for the Caldwell children to be re-enrolled, that uh, Pastor Caldwell will have to be our graduation speaker every year until they all graduate. <laughs> Thank you very much for those inspirational words. I've heard a lot of graduation speeches. That is the best one that I've heard. Graduates, that was a real treat for you. Let's give one more round of applause for Pastor Caldwell.